Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video I'm going to show you the best way to implement health checks for your .NET applications. I've worked for small companies and huge billion dollar companies and in any project ever we had health checks in place. You need to be aware that things go wrong when they go wrong and be alerted and in today's day and age, especially with containers and clusters, you need to know when a container in your cluster is dead so the traffic can be rerouted to the healthy applications in that cluster. So in this video I'm going to show you how you can get started with health checks in .NET with the built-in .NET health check support and also show you how you can expand it in a few very nice and really really cool ways to make it very easy for you to implement very complex health checks. If you like the web content and you want to see more make sure you subscribe ring the same notification bell and for more training check out my courses on dometrain.com. Alright so let me show you what I have here. I have a simple customer API it doesn't really have much that you need to care about other than the endpoints we can create a customer in the system, we can retrieve a customer, get all customers, update a customer or delete a customer. It's a very simple CRUD API and it uses, for example, here a Postgres database to make all the actions. And also because as part of the contract of this API, we use a GitHub username because the user needs to be a valid GitHub user. If we take a look over here to this GitHub service, as part of validation and other functionality, we check that the user is also a valid GitHub user. So we have the API itself that needs to be alive and healthy, but also we have dependencies both in our database, that Postgres database, and on GitHub, a third party API. We need to know that those things are healthy for application to be healthy. If the database is unhealthy, then the application is unhealthy. And if GitHub is down, then we are either unhealthy or degraded. And that's a decision you have to make on your end. At what point is your application completely unhealthy and it should not be sent traffic? And at what point is it degraded, meaning it can maybe still handle some traffic, but not all, or there's an issue that it might recover from and so on. Now, if I was to just run the API, everything will run fine. Everyone is happy. And if I try to create a user, both GitHub is up and my database over here in Docker is up. So no problems will be detected or happen. The action will actually happen successfully. However, if the application is running, it starts, is healthy, it's fine, as you can see, it can handle traffic, but suddenly the database goes down. I just go ahead and I stop it. The application is still running, and if it's running in a cluster or in a system, you won't know that this actually is unable to handle requests until someone sends a request. So if I try to go ahead and create a user, I'm going to get a 500 uh, internal server error because the database is not running. I can really demonstrate this by going to Postman and just calling the customer's endpoint. And as you can see, after some timeout period, I think five seconds, we're going to get our exception. We have four seconds over here. So as you can see, fail to connect to that address because it's down. Eventually, if the database, I don't know, recovers and we try to send those requests, it will respond, it will be fine. But during that period, it is unhealthy and everyone who tries to access it will see an error message. We don't want that experience. Both we want to prevent that and be alerted before the user actually sees that and has a bad experience. But also if this leaves behind a traffic manager or a cluster, we don't want any traffic to be going to that service. We want to deem it as unhealthy and then periodically see if it recovers. So what we're going to do is use the built-in .NET health checks. Now, ASP.NET Core, or it has that functionality in it. So all we need to do here is go into the services and say builder.services.add health checks. And that's it to add all the services needed. And then we need to register the middleware associated with this. And remember, middleware is actually sequential. So the position does matter. If we register it here above Swagger, then Swagger is agnostic of the health check. If we have it after the HTTPS redirection, then it will take that into account as well. And we can simply say map health checks. And that is it. Now we need to pass down the endpoint and where I want to have this is actually forward slash underscore health. That's a very common a convention for having your meta endpoints, whether that is health or metrics or stats or something like this. And now the moment I do that and I go ahead and I run my API, I can go to Postman and I can say health over here. And if I call that, we're going to get healthy and 200 OK. Now, the problem is that if the database does go down and the application is running and I call this again, it is still healthy because it doesn't have the context of what the dependence is. So we want to introduce that to that concept. What I'm going to do is for now restart the database and then create my first health check. I'm going to go ahead here and create a health directory and create my first class. And I'm going to call that database health check. Now for this to be a valid health check, it needs to implement the iHealthCheck interface 
and then the missing members. So all I'm having here is this context over here and this cancellation token, which can be used to cancel a health check. And I need to implement the body of this. Now, for a database check, this is very simple, actually. Can we open a connection and can we execute a query? And that is it. And since I already have here a database connection factory, I can inject that here and say private read only IDB connection factory, grab a connection from that. So I can say in here, turn this into async and then have a try and catch. And that is actually important because we're going to be using that exception if it happens. Remember, we want to check for catastrophic failure. So we have that here and then we say using var connection equals await db connection factory and create the connection. Now at this point, all I need to do is create a command, set the command text to select one that's going to be enough. Can you execute a query and then just run it? And if this all happens successfully, we can simply say return health check result healthy, that it's all good. However, if at any point here we get an exception, then that indicates that the database is unhealthy. And this is where I'm going to say health check. And in this case, I would say that this is an unhealthy state, not a degraded state, because without the database, there is no API. So unhealthy. And I'm going to pass down the exception as well to give more context to this check. So now that I have this, all I'm going to do is go back to program.cs, scroll the way up and say add check database health check. And then I'm going to give it a name database or Postgres or whatever you want. And now I can just run it and it is going to work. The API is running, the database is up and running. If I say health, as you can see, this will trigger. And if I stick a breakpoint here, you're going to see that it's going to step in here and do all the checks. So it's going to go in, check the request, send the request and eventually say that it is healthy. But if the database goes down suddenly and I try to do the same thing, look what happens suddenly unhealthy in 503. And now if I have tooling, alerting, monitoring, things will trigger and I'm going to start getting emails or Slack notifications and so on to say, hey, something happened with this service. And I can do the same with the API as well. And it's the same thing. All I'm going to do is create a new class called GitHub Health Check. And that's going to look in a very similar way. We inject the GitHub service. We try to get a test user, in this case, me. If this executes successfully, then everything is good. If we get an exception, then mark it as unhealthy and move on. Now, arguably, could this be a degraded state? It could because now you're going to have create and update not working, but get or delete will be working. And you have to manage your way around this. But I'm going to leave it as unhealthy to simplify the flow over here. So now I restarted the database. I'm going to go to program.cs and add the second check as well. So GitHub health check over here and call it GitHub and that's it. And if I run this and I go ahead and I call that endpoint, all I'm going to get is healthy because now both checks will get triggered and they all going to be good. Now, here's where this gets interesting. Just saying healthy might not be good enough for you, especially if you want to use that health check endpoint for internal use, which normally you would. You wouldn't publicly expose it unless you whitelist who can actually call this. And we're going to see how we can do that. But just healthy isn't enough for me. And we can actually make this better because we can customize the response writer for that health check. And it's very easy to do. All I'm going to say is new health check options. And you have a bunch of them here, but the one we care about is this one, response writer. Now, the response writer gets the HTTP context health report and returns a task that writes to the response. And you can write your own, but we don't need to do that because there's many people who actually use health checks that have written some excellent tooling around those. One such tool is the following NuGet package. We're going to go ahead and paste this ASP.NET Core.HealthChecks.UI.Client and I'm going to go ahead and install this. And all I need to do now is say UI response writer dot write health check UI response. And that is it. That delegate now is matched and passed here. And if I say debug now and I go ahead and I run this, then look what happens. Eventually, when the API is running, you're going to get the healthy and then both the total duration of both health check requests and each individual entry. So the database took this long and it's healthy and the GitHub one took this long and it's also healthy. If I go ahead and I stop Postgres and then I say send it, this is overall unhealthy, but we can see that GitHub is actually healthy, but we can also see that the database terminated due to an administrator uh, command, which is what I did by turning it off. So it's very interesting that you get more context now and that actually happens because we are passing that exception object in that response over here 
in the health check. Here we go. That's the thing that makes the difference. But here's where this becomes completely bonkers and just out of this world. And that's why I love the community of .NET. If I go to NuGet and I delete this UI and client part and I keep ASP.NET Core checks, then as you can see over here, there's a family of packages from SQL Server to URIs to Redis to MongoDB, Postgres, Kafka, Network, My... Like, look at all these. All of these are individual vendor sort of things like Kubernetes here, RavenDB, uh, SEC, Prometheus for publishers as well, DocumentDB, Venstor, SendGrid, so many. The one we are using is Postgres. So I'm just going to go here and install NPG SQL and just quickly install that. I'm going to go ahead and comment out the one I wrote, this database check, and I'm going to say dot add NPG SQL. I'm going to pass down the connection string for the database. And that's it. I don't need to write the check myself. There's actually one already. And it's very likely that anything that you're using in terms of a dependency, there's going to be a check for you to use due to this family of libraries. So I'm going to go ahead and just run it. And now I'm going to just run this health check endpoint and the database NPG SQL is healthy. And if it eventually goes down, let's just stop it. Then as you can see, we get the same support as before. It is fantastic. It's excellent. You don't need to write a single line of code. And I highly recommend you give the project and the family a start on GitHub. I'm going to put a link in the description. Lovely, lovely packages. Now, a couple of last things I want to mention. Um, you might want to limit who can call that endpoint, like I said before. So you can do things like require hosts. So you can require a specific host uh, or a set of hosts to actually be able to call this. Or you might require authorization for something to call this. Or you can do what most people will probably do, which is limit this endpoint within a network and only allow that internal network to actually call it, which is how I've seen it implemented as well. But it's good to know you have a bunch of extension methods here that you can actually use to change the behavior of who can call it and how they can call it. But now I want to know from you, are you using health checks? And did you know about this family of libraries that implement all of these different vendors and health checks for them? Leave a comment down below and let me know. Well, that's all I have for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Special thanks to my Patreons for making it as possible. If you want to support me, you're going to find the link in the description down below. Leave a like if you like this video, subscribe, more than like this, and hit the bell as well. And I'll see you in the next video. Keep coding.